everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope everybody's enjoying my YouTube uh, videos on Cuckoo Clock Repair for Beginners. Uh, I hope that you're learning things, because that's what this is all about. Me trying to pass my knowledge of working on clocks to y'all, so you don't have the same mistakes that I had. But this video is going to be uh, repairing, or actually cleaning, a Lux Cuckoo Clock. So kick back, relax, grab something to drink, grab something to eat, grab a cigarette, and I hope that you enjoy the video, and I hope that you learn things. In accordance with uh, uh, Dan and Diana's uh, Lux page, this is the clock right here that I have. It was made in 1940. And what it says is Syracuse Wood Carvings Dial and Cuckoo Door on Wood Case Lux USA on Dial Height 11 inches to bottom of base Width 8 inches Fitted with a Lux one day double weight, weight driven movement Metal Cuckoo Bird emerges from behind the door and counts the hours And again on the half hour The original bellows were made of Bakelite Metal pine cone weights, metal clock hands, metal pen and lumb rod, and a Serco wood maple leaf bob. Made by the Lux Manufacturing Company, Waterbury, Connecticut. Distributed through the Deluxe Clock Manufacturing Company, New York City. I will leave a link to their page in the description of this video. But this is what their homepage. Let me get back to it. This is what their homepage looks like. Dan and Diana's. In fact, the Troy Dylon Troy didn't lie. The guy that wrote all the books, he uses their uh, web page information. Uh, to uh, to gather all the information on his books. It's one of the best uh, Lux pages out there. The only one that I use. Here's uh, my clock. It's all original except for the weights. And this is the issue with my clock. Cuckoo bounces while it's going off. The door comes in and out, which is an easy fix. The hands are not lined up where it needs to be. The hands are slipping. And it's cuckooing more than one time on the half hour. Now here's a Lux um, one day movement it's the exact same kind of movement that's in that clock uh, my buddy gave me this clock along with this movement here's the uh, hour pipe the uh, minute pipe or that has the two pens on it and these two pins is what lifts this lever right here, which trips the clock. This 
minute wheel with minute pinion which doesn't seem to want to come off this uh, clock is a little rusty this movement Anyway, there's a pressure washer underneath there. And I've talked about this before, and I just, in another group, I told a person what to do on another channel um, because his minute hand was just dropping. If your minute hand is dropping, it's because the pressure. This minute wheel with minute pinion is connected to the great wheel on the time side. This is what controls the hour hand and the minute hand. There's a tension washer underneath there. If that tension washer is too loose, then this is going to spin easily. And which will, in turn, allow your hands to drop. So if your hands are dropping, tighten up the tension washer that's underneath there. I'm going to take these off just to show you. Again, this trips the levers. You see it on the hour and the half hour. those two pins that are underneath there. This lever here comes out of the count wheel. And when it comes out, that is when the clock is cuckooing on the, you see how this is dropping? It's not supposed to drop. It's supposed to ride the count wheel, and that's why the the bird is bouncing in and out is because this lever is dropping. And on the clock that I showed you, this lever drops into the slots for the hour and the half hour it's not the count wheel is not adjusted right because that lever is skipping the half hour and continuing to drop uh, continuing to go around the count wheel um, until it drops in the hour again so anyway just wanted to show you what we're going to get involved in. It's always nice to have an extra movement. So when you take your movement apart, you can use this movement as a diagram to put your movement back together. Metal tail, that's what lifts the the bellow lift wire hits to make the bird bob up and down here's the original door for this clock and uh, you can still read most of it says we guarantee this clock against defects in material and workmanship for a period of one year of the data manufacture it's got somebody's uh name and address of who used to own this clock pretty cool label here's the original pendulum it's a metal base with the Syracuse pendulum bob.
so um, it's time to take this thing apart. Taking the hands off, the hour hand has got a pipe on it that fits down over the hour shaft. The minute hand is square, but it's kind of worn out. And that's why it's slipping. We'll take the bird off of its post. It's not a uh, typical piece of wire. It's some kind of a metal knob, I guess you could call it. But time to take the bellows out. There's two screws on each side. So we're going to take those out off camera. The bellows even though they work properly, are not original to the movement. And I already got this bellow with a rubber band around it for the wire. But uh, if you remember me reading Dan and Diana's webpage, it said that the uh, bellows were Bakelite. And these are not Bakelite, they're wooden. They've been replaced. Time to get the chains out. I broke that link. Well, that's all right. There's plenty more links. There's one chain. Now we have to get the other chain out, but it's it's for the time, and I got wound up. So uh, I think in order to get it undone, I'm going to remove the pendulum leader wire. which uh, you can't remove it. And so I'm going to uh, undo the verge assembly here. Or try to. That screw is inside the movement somewhere. Once I undo this verge assembly, I can pull on that chain and it will speed up. There we go. It's out of the way. So, there we go. Because the verge is not stopping it. It's so I can uh, undo this link now. And get this chain out. Now there are four screws that are holding the movement in. So I'm going to take those off. Off camera. Now that I have the movement out of the case, I'm going to set the case to the side. And we're going to discuss this movement. 
typically in a count wheel type movement, there's a washer that prevents all these gears from coming forward, but not on these Lux movements. Uh, Waterbury uh, decided that they didn't need that washer. And so when you put this thing back into the clock, you have to make sure that all this is on or it will fall off on you just like that. When I look at the uh, pivot wear, there's pivot wear on the second wheel, the escapement wheel on that side. A little bit of a pivot wear on the uh, second wheel on the front side. But the clock is taken away. And so I am not going to... Uh, maybe we'll replace a bushing. But... Removing the count wheel. Now if you don't remove this count wheel... When you go to clean it, water can get underneath this screw and it might not dry off. I need to find a screwdriver that will work. Using my uh, tools that my son got me. Now the uh, thread on this screw, it, typically there's not that many threads. And so that's why you want to uh, take this screw out because water moisture could get underneath that screw and it might not dry off. Should have left that in there so we could have discussed it. Because when activated, let me put the screw back in. Stand by. When you put this together, you want to make sure that this lever here is on the other side of this tab you see how the lever is bouncing off the count wheel and that is causing the cuckoo bird to bounce and I want to get past these areas here. You see how the um, the lever is at an angle to the count wheel. That's what. That's how come it couldn't trip on the half hour, or sorry, wouldn't cuckoo on the half hour. It's because this is at an angle and it needs to be parallel with the side of one of these tabs. So this needs to be bent some to allow it to uh, drop into for the half hour.
see now it's dropping in on the half hour. You see that? It's stopping on the half hour now. So that was an easy fix there. But I have to... Um, I have to uh, adjust this so it rides that count wheel and not go above the count wheel like it is. That way the bird's not bouncing. So I'm going to see if I can adjust it now or break it on. See, now it's riding the count wheel, and the bird is not bouncing. But I have to adjust it to go in for the half hour now, because I got that out of adjustment again. But it's not bouncing anymore. This is a simple fix. Because you see all that space, I can put a screwdriver in there. So I have to do, or all I should have to do, is take the count wheel off, move it a notch. And put the count wheel back on. And then it will cuckoo on both the hour and the half hour. Did you see that? So I moved the count wheel. It's striking on the hour, it drops in, then it should drop in for the half hour, which it does. I'll show you one more time. It drops in for the hour, trip it again, drops in for the half hour. So, as you can see, the bird is no longer bouncing as it's cuckooing. And if I kept my fingers out of the way, it would drop in for the hour. Or it should. It's not dropping in for the hour. And I think it has something to do with the spring. Because there's hardly any spring in the um, in this lever. I also think that there's a hole right here. That way you could run a string or a piece of wire down um, and pull on that wire or hole. In case it's not uh, cuckooing properly. As you can see, there's a hole in the bottom of the case. There's no doors as you would 
for a typical clock of this period, but there's this hole in the bottom of the case to add that wire or string. So we'll have to do that also. But uh, I'm wanting to take this movement apart and clean it. So that's what I'm going to do now. If you don't have an extra movement, like I do, you need to take plenty of pictures all the way around the sides, the whole bit, so you can see how to put this thing back together. And I want you to notice that the um, high note and low note levers are in this area right here. There's no gong on this clock there's only bellows but they fall in the same on the same tab and it is a tab that is in this location right here just right above that hole so when you put this back together you're going to want to make sure that this tab is right above that hole or a tab is right above this hole right here. And then this second wheel, which has the cam on it, The third wheel warning pin, which is right here. Hits. The lever, which is part of the lever that drops into the count wheel. It hits it when it's all done cuckooing. And this lever here goes into that cam when it's all done cuckooing. When the clock goes into warning, we'll discuss that later. But anyway, we're going to take this apart the uh, bird, what's cool about this, this lever here is adjustable so you can make the bird tilt up, down, or allow it to tilt up. But I think it's friction fit on there, and I'm not going to take it off. So we're going to take the bird off by undoing these two screws. And there's a, a brass collar, I guess you could call it, a bushing collar, whatever you want to call it, that stops the bird post from coming out. And this wire is just on the other side. So now the bird and its post is out of my way.
this piece here it's friction fit on and I'm not going to take it off So it's time to put my posts on my legs to take the movement off. Now when we remove this plate, the great wheel for the time side is going to stay with the front plate and the great wheel for the strike side is going to stay with the back plate because on the time side you have this wheel here that it's not going to come off. And then for the great wheel on the strike side, you got this pinion gear here that I'm not going to take off. And I don't know what size nut this is. I got them loose so I can use the nut driver to uh, take them out, but I like using the proper tool for the job, especially on these nuts, because you can wear them out, and make them rounded. But Let's see what happens. Now this is that cam I was talking about. This, this is the second wheel with the cam on it. And When it's in place, and I got to get it back in place so I can show you. Stand by. Now, when, when it's in place, this lever right here, which goes in and out of the count wheel, has got this piece right here. When it's all done cuckooing, it falls into that piece, and the third wheel with warning pin, which is right here, rotates until it hits the head of that piece. This part right here, which is connected to the front, which comes off the minute, the two minute tabs, this is what puts the clock in warning and what lifts the um, this lever out of the way. So anyway, we got the time side second wheel, time side escape wheel. We got this lever right here, which has a spring on it, and the spring isn't working that well. Then you got the second wheel strike side, second wheel third wheel with warning pin, and then the fly. And the fly always goes next to the third wheel with warning pin. So I'm going to go ahead and put these parts in my cleaner. After I take a toothpick and clean out all the holes, because I told you before that the 
ultrasonic cleaner is like a dishwasher. You have to pre-wash your dishes in order for them to uh, get clean. The ultrasonic cleaner will not clean these holes if they have dried up oil, dirt, gunk on them. And there's a bunch of dried up oil and gunk on this one. This spring here has got something to do with the ratcheting system. The gear actually is coming out of the wheel on this to operate the ratcheting system. This pinion gear is what keeps it in place. I see how far this one moves. It moves about the same distance. So I guess that's natural. And you might be able to see it but right here is the, it's like a four leaf clover suspension. System. I'm put my screwdriver underneath it so you can see. You should be able to see me. Moving the, the suspension system. That is what makes this wheel tight to prevent the uh, the wheels from uh, coming off the hands from dropping. Well, anyway, I'm going to put these parts in the cleaner. Okay, the parts out of the cleaner. And as you, I got the uh, skateboard wheel back in. As you can see, it's rocking back and forth. From side to side. And so, um, I'm going to do a tilt test on it. As you can see, it don't tilt that much on this one. But when I put it in the respective hole for this one, it doesn't tilt that much either compared to the other one. But I'm sorry, I had it in the wrong hole. It tilts quite a bit in this hole where it belongs. If it was to go in this hole, because that hole needs done also, but in this hole, it doesn't tilt that much. But where it belongs, you see how far it tilts and so it doesn't tilt that much going this way but going this way and that's because the bushing is worn out 
from side to side. And this bushing is for the um, second wheel. And it's worn out quite a bit. So both of these bushings need replaced. Now I have a video on the KWM bushing chart that I'm showing you right now. I have L12 bushings. I've got some some um, some that take reamer number one, but they're too small. So L12, which is 0.65 to 0.70, and when you follow L12 up, it says it takes a reamer number two. This is the pivot diameter over here, L2. The diameter for L2, the height is 1.4. The diameter is 1.8. The reamer is 1.78. So I just recently purchased this set. Nah, sorry. I just recently purchased this set right here. It comes with five reamers and one chamfering cutter and a handle. And this is what the reamers look like. Now you do you do not have to use reamers to put in bushings. You can use cutting brooches, and that is how I learned from the VHS tape. I have a YouTube video that explains how to do it, but they're eighteen seventy five a piece. Or you can purchase the whole set for $108 through Time Savers, and that's what I did. But it doesn't come with cutter number six. Uh, sorry, reamer number six, which is um, 8.7 millimeters um, in diameter. And these are the reamers themselves, except for this. This is the chamfering tool. What this is used for, when you put your bushing in, you want to put it in. Well, you do it the way you want. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have it flush with the inside plate. And then this right here is... In case your uh, bushing is thicker than what it needs to be, use this tool right here to to make it flush with the plate. Now, some people will go ahead and um, uh, allow them to stick out, but there's no numbers on these things, so you have to figure out which one is one, which one is two, etc. So, uh, here's number two, this is number one, and this is the one I'm going to use to put this bushings in. Like I said, the uh, package I chose is L12. The bore diameter is 0.8, which is not big enough, because the pivot diameters are... They say 0 0.8, 0 0.9, something like that. So we'll have to make the bore diameter a little bit bigger. But like I said, we're going to do this one right here. I got number two in. So you just start turning... The cool thing about the KWMs is 
you don't have to go from small to big to big to big to bigger as you would with the a cutting broach system. And you want to take your time doing this. You want to make sure that it is parallel with the plate. You want to take your time because if you get in a hurry, you will make the hole bigger than what you want it. And then you'll have to select a bigger bushing. So I'm going to finish reaming this out off camera. Now I have I have the bushing reamed out. I have the bushing in the hole, and I'm going to take my hammer and try to pound it in there. And you want it flush. The uh, bushing is a little bit thicker. Than the um, than the plate, now I don't feel any dimples, so the bushing is all the way through. But as you could see, or you should be able to see. The bushing itself sticks up a little bit more than the plate. Let me get something to point with. Right here. It sticks up a little bit more than the plate itself. And that is what the chamfering tool is for. Now this is on the oil sink side. So you take the chamfering tool put it in your reamer handheld and then you cut the excess away which gives you an oil sink you already had an oil sink in the bushing itself but this makes sure that there's not any extra sticking out of the plate itself But now because this does not fit in that hole, we now have to get our cutting brooches out to make that hole bigger. And here's my set of cut cutting brooches. And I do have a smooth cutting brooch in this set. So I have to choose one that's about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 to, um, because that's the diameter of the pivot to put in that hole. Now I have a, a, a cutting brooch here and I shoved most of it down this handle. This is called a pen vise and you need that to hold your cutting brooch. But you can mark them with a the tape or you can shove them down the handle 
what you don't want to use. So I got one millimeter sticking out. And again, you always want to uh, double check your measurements. Here we got one millimeter, 0.9 millimeters, one millimeter. Depending on where you put this uh, cheap digital calipers, depending on where, what kind of measurement you're going to get. So uh, now I want to very carefully start putting this in that hole because if you if you push too hard you will push that bushing out and I might have to uh, go to a smaller one to start with, because remember I was telling you when you're using these cutting approaches, you got to go from small to big to bigger. And here I have a smaller one, but I don't know how big this thing is to go with 0.8. It's at 0.8 and the... Uh, the beginning of what I'm trying to go with is at point nine. So I might have trouble um, getting this hole big enough. I might be uh, wasting my time here, too. I might have to resort to a drill bit, because this is the next smallest cutting brooch that I have. So I'm going to try to brooch out this hole off camera. Well, trying to uh, brooch out the hole, the bushing came out this is used for pocket watches you can use a drill press you don't have to hammer the bushings in you can use a drill press and do the same thing I'm fixing to do you could take and line this up I gotta turn the bushing around But you can, um, like I said, use a drill press and do the same thing. This is called a pusher. And what it is used for is to push the bushings into their proper spot. This thing is adjustable and all you do is line it up and then take your hammer and give it a quick tap like that and it puts the bushing in its in the hole. Again a drill press does the same thing they make and this this comes with all kinds of different pieces again it's for pocket watches you have uh, 
this piece right here not necessarily this piece but you line you would line your bushing up with this starter bit first and then lock it in place if you could and then take your pusher put your bushing on and give it a tap to tap your bushings into the plates but this doesn't always work and that's why I was showing you that you can use your hammer to tap the bushings into place Still working on reaming out the hole. After many painstaking issues, I finally got the bushing in. But as you can see, there's still um, some pivot wear in it. And when I do the tilt test, as I showed you before, it's not on this one, it's on this one. When I do the tilt test, it's better than it was but you heard me say this before I don't like the KWM bushing system uh, they should have made it the reamer a little bit smaller so you have to force that bushing in and the reason why I say that is because by the time you take cutting brooches to broach out the hole, the, the bushing came off several times on my cutting brooches. The bushings that I ordered, as you can see, The bore height is 0.8 millimeters, okay? Most cuckoo clock pivots is um, the diameter is around 0.8 millimeters. So this thing should fit in there, but it doesn't. So you have to broach it out. And by the time you get done broaching it out and the bushing came out on your um, broaching tool, you get mad that the, the reamer was not made just a slight diameter smaller so now we're going to put this thing back together I got my pen where I want it I got some Rotico to uh, keep the uh, uh, strike side main gear in place so um, working on the time side you got the second wheel I think I got my feet in the wrong spot. Second wheel. 
escapement wheel and the virgin crutch assembly we could put in last because it's a totally different system and then you have to work on the strike side you got this cam right here And this lever here that goes into the cam I got the cam gear upside down And the third wheel with warning pin, I mean, the pin has to hit the head of that lever. When it's done cuckooing, and then the fly. And then I'm going to try to put this gear in its place. Without destroying too much, I guess you could say. Like I said, I have this movement here so I can see if I'm putting the levers on correctly. And I got this leg in the wrong spot. Anyway. I'm going to continue putting this together off camera because uh, I need it closer to me and y'all are not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Got the movement back together, doing a functioning test by tripping this lever here up while I put pressure on it. And as you can see, it cuckoos one time, high note lever lifts first, then low note lever, which is a shorter lever. The warning pin, third wheel warning pin, when it's all done, is hitting this tab on this lever right here. So the function test passes. So now I have to put the rest of it back on and FYI the Rodico that I put on this move on this uh, strike side gear kept it in place where I wanted it that way that 
tab that the low note and high note levers are in the exact spot where it's at, which in turn allows the function test to work properly. Now you can use Rodico on all the gears as you go if you want to help keep it in place, but it works great. I got the count wheel on, I got the bird on, I got it all adjusted. When you um, trip the levers, it cuckoos on the half hour and the hour. And the bird comes back in the way it's supposed to. It goes out the way it's supposed to. And so, uh, this lever here is what trips the bird to go out. This wire brings the bird back in, this spring wire. So if your bird is not going in fast enough for you, tighten up that spring wire or replace it. If your bird is not going out far enough for you, then you have to bring this lever here closer to this lever here. This lever here, which is part of the lever that goes into the count wheel, closer to this lever here but if you get it too close your bird might bounce as it goes out of the um, clock probably end up bringing this lever closer to this lever but that is going to be determined once I put the uh, movement back in the case I got the movement all oiled up it's time to put these levers on and it's time to see whether or not when I put a minute hand on whether it will drop straight up in the air when it cuckoos and if it doesn't drop straight up in the air then you have to adjust this tab in a relationship with these tabs. But it's easier to put a round whole hand, minute hand on the, the clock. This is not an antique. I don't have the original hands. The hand that I do have the square is worn out. Grab it. It's not perfectly square anymore. It's more round. So I'm going to end up putting see it doesn't do anything. I'm going to end up adjusting it the way I do Herbert Hers with the round hole minute hand. I hope y'all liked the first part of this video. And part two, we're going to uh, put the movement back in, uh, put the chains, weights, and everything on, and uh, get it adjusted, ticking away. So uh, please stick around for part two and uh, 
Uh, may God bless each and every one of you.